My name is Dr. Sandeep Wadwa, and I am a internist and geriatrician that also did um, healthcare economics training at the Warden School and have been very interested in um, population health and the use of technology and novel payment methods to advance health and and particularly interested in, in reducing morbidity and preventable mortality. So uh, I, I've had the good fortune of, of working um, both um, in academics and for the regulator. Um, and uh, now in this most recent portion of my career, really been interested in global health and national models of care. And so really I'm excited to um, uh, collaborate, particularly in the Gulf, um, to advance um, the health of the population. Benefit of, of using conversational AI, uh, such as front end speech recognition, combined with um, ambient clinical documentation, is that this technology creates new efficiencies for clinicians. Um, while documenting in the electronic health record. It, it frees up time for the clinician so they can focus on delivering care, not on documenting it. Uh, with the ambient clinical documentation, uh, we can record the patient, physician, family, physician conversation, and then leverage the generative AI to create a first pass of a clinical note. Um, the, the clinical note will become a byproduct of the patient-physician conversation, encounter, physical exam. And this allows the clinician to focus on the patient in front of them, um, to make eye contact, pick up on the nonverbal cues. Instead of uh, focusing on typing and clicking on the computer. And I think this also will have a measurable impact on the patient experience. Um, the clinician is focused on them. Clinician is focused on the family. And I think that all the parties in the room um, will feel the benefit of that, that increased focus and intention. Um, so this, this technology, I think, picks up the key clinical nuggets from the conversation necessary for documenting a complete, accurate uh, picture of the patient's complexity, and then allows the physician to then focus on a, a completion editing function. Um, and I, I think the technology really uh, will be a, a real advance in patient-physician interactions and productivity uh, quality of care and the patient experience. There is this notion of approaching new technology with with um, caution, and and so I, I I expect there to be a trial a test phase. There have been many promises for technology, and there's unintended consequences. So I, I think that this there'll be a, a, a small set of, of maybe early adopters um, uh, getting the comfort, having some people who can then uh, be the champions for the rest of the organization. So I, I, I think there've been promises made in this area before around technology making life easier. Early experiences though have allayed some of those concerns, but, but I think um, it, it'll be, uh, clear as people start to uh, work with the technology. Four areas that come to mind. One is help in recalling a differential diagnosis. The brain is marvelous, but I think with some assistance, having thoughtful point of care differential diagnosis I will help. I think maybe point two is we will see these tools helping an earlier diagnosis. There's a tension between a watchful waiting and missing a signal. I think that expanding of the differential early in our process with maybe an early set of symptoms may help get some conditions earlier to mind. Other factors that impact on health and well-being, social risks, 
genetic information. Life context matters. And so I think bringing these factors into consideration in a structured, thoughtful, and then of course, the goal is to do this unobtrusively as possible. This holistic view of the patient is another dimension. While I'm a physician, I think of ourselves as being a subset of public health, that our work is to advance the public health. We do much of our work on an individual basis, but I do think that these tools will also help in early identification of, let's say, population health threats, whether that's infectious or environmental, that we'll be more able to wear our public health physician role, both at this micro level and at a macro level. I think there is a need for better communication up front about the use of technology and permission and respecting the patient's decisions. Maybe they don't want the conversation uh, to be running through an algorithm and that they should, you know, we should think about having rights where the patient can say no. And I also think for the genetic information, there is an opportunity to draw upon that information and let the patient know that, um, you know, we, we, we have some biomarkers or genetic markers uh, that, that are informing our decision. I think that the days of telling versus asking are, are there's a this switch going on that, that uh, you know, we are recognizing patients participate. Um, when they participate, I think the quality of the treatment is enhanced, that, that they, there is participation, there's un greater understanding. So I think disclosure and consent have been parts of our ecosystem, but, but now that we're bringing in new tools and new data, we need to, to continue to not forget that those concepts extend to these areas as well. I've spent more time in the Gulf in the past two years than uh, I feel like I'm in the U.S. where I'm based. So, so I, it, it has been a joy to have had multiple visits to um, UAE, both to Dubai, um, to Abu Dhabi, and have partnerships with the regulators uh, as well as with the health systems. And um, I, I, I think I, I've been so impressed with um, commitments to population health, commitments to thoughtful use of technology, um, uh, e issues of workforce participation, youth participation. And I've also um, had similar experience in uh, Saudi, Qatar, and in Kuwait. Uh, and so just uh, personally have been um, spending time in each of those countries, I even expect to be in Bahrain. And so I, I, the, the Gulf is, I think, at the forefront of, of these topics. I think both the health systems and the regulator are really advancing uh, a population health perspective that's informed by technology and um, it, it's a very exciting time uh, to be working in the healthcare system in uh, the GCC. Part of the, the challenges, I think, are making sure that the AI's training data set is not biased. And, and so I, I think that this notion of, even as we enter into the EHR, I think there's some prerequisites around, explain to me that this training set you used is applicable. And it goes back to our earlier conversation around explainability and transparency. I think that these will be key for trust, not just, we've been talking about the patient's trust. I think there's also a physician trust. And so I think the challenge around explainability, transparency, and then I think these models, there's this concept of drift, that there's a need for continuous and continuous monitoring. That, that the model doesn't start to go into some unexpected direction. And, and so in looking for there to be this process of, of sometimes we say set it and forget it. And I think that's a mistake uh, that, that we set it and we, we keep on it. And so I, I think those are maybe the key areas that I think are one step ahead of the integration, but, but if not done thoughtfully, then I think the, the, uh, integration efforts will, will be uh, more uh, problematic.